Yes. I need a raise of hands. How many of you have actually heard about the terms Industrial Revolution 4.0? Yes, I think you have, in the morning, you have seen that drone is one of the technologies, and you have seen the mixed reality is one of the technologies in Industrial Revolution 4.0. But how many of you actually have lived in this era 50 years ago? <laughs> Well, I do. It was me, 50 years ago. I lived in this particular era. It was a very long time ago. But, in fact, not exactly living in that era. I watched this particular cartoon series called The Jetsons. If any one of you remember this cartoon series? Wow, then you are at my age. <laughs> we have seen the drone just now. Imagine at that particular time, there's no technology that we can see drones everywhere. We can even video conference, we have a FaceTime now, but 50 years ago, it's impossible. Even at that time, people had already imagined smart watches. We have seen robots and everywhere today. We have seen people you know, having this telehealth. We don't even have the doctor with them. And even 3D printing, and it's possible today which was not, you know, people have imagined this much, much earlier without the right technologies that exist at that particular time. That actually inspires me. I was thinking that during that age, I would like to become an inventor, to become a scientist, to invent a robot. Wow, at that particular age. But I also have this inspiration from my late father, Nearly every night, I've seen him tinkering, repairing television at the back of the house. And I followed him to the TV shops. He will get a TV circuitry diagram for a particular model. He went back and he repaired the television. What amazed me is that my father don't even have an electrical background. He's a clerk, clerk, clerical job in one of the government agencies. I just wonder where he learned all of this. So I used to take his uh, books. I don't know what exactly that book is all about, but that also inspires me to take electrical engineering from my first degree, my master's, even to my PhD. So I have this vision to become an inventor, to become a scientist. Because we see that inventors, it's just like a drop of ripples, you know, a, a water, and it will ripple. And we can see that a lot of these inventions comes with a lot of ripples. When it combines, it becomes a wave. When it becomes huge, it becomes a tsunami. What are you going to be? Do you want to become the innovators who ride the wave? Or you want to lay back at the beach waiting for the tsunami to arrive? <laughs> okay? We have seen a lot of times when we are laying, lying down at the beach, suddenly we found out there is this water subsides, go back to the sea, and there's a certain kind of calmness, and suddenly we thought that everything is okay, and we see that the tsunami just come and hit us, and being wiped out. So if you look at these trends of IoT and even fourth industrial revolutions, when exactly that you remember the time that you even searched the word IoT? In Malaysia, it was 2014, this was about four years ago, but if you just Google it yesterday or one year ago, you're a little bit late. IR 4.0 is about last year. That's how people are going to get excited about these new terms and technology. So the question now is that, where are we in the industrial revolution? Before we even mention about fourth, we need to understand what's the first industrial revolution. I make it simple. When we talk about doing things in manual, using your hands, and all that, even in factory, maybe you use steam engine, coal, that's 1.0. The moment people introduce electrical, that's 2.0. When the factory use some form of automation, or in your daily life, you're using internet, that's 3.0. When intelligence comes in, there's a lot of sensors, new technologies, for example, IoT came in, uh, blockchain, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, that's 4.0. Okay, now the question is, where are we? This is your survival test. Where are we now? 
Okay, let's take a look at this video. Can you tell me which industrial revolution are we now? One? Or two? Or three? So there's a combination of electrical and manual. So which industrial revolution are we now? <laughs> One? Two? Or even four? <laughs> So, what, 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 what happened? Where are we now? So, we made a survey and we asked the, the, the industry and we are actually in a mixed era, just like the presentations. We thought that we are 4.0. No, we are not. We are actually 2.7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, why the journey to industrial 4.0 revolution is very difficult? Okay, let's take a look. Most of us feel very comfortable, right? The videos that you have seen, they still want to use something which is very high-tech, but yet they don't want to let go of the manual things. So it's just like something you want to do a budget jumping. You either you feel scared or you feel comfortable, but you have difficulty to jump. So how do you jump into that era? You just need a little push. <laughs> That's how we do it. You need someone to scare you off. Hey, we are too late. We need to jump into this new era. So, let's another test. Education 4.0. Are we having schools using augmented reality now? Are we still using whiteboard? Uh, why we are 1.0? <laughs> okay. This event, let's have a test. Do you register your conference, your registration using facial recognition, biometrics, or pen and paper? Oh my God, that's 1.0. <laughs> okay. So we need to move on because if we don't, it's not only us. We are being replaced by the, by the robots. You know, uh, SoftBank have done this to replace the customer service. There is a gimmick, Sophia. She became uh, the, the Saudi citizen. They replace robots for international space shuttle. Even the animals are not being spared. Okay. So in order for us to understand what is fourth industrial revolution? You look at one particular technology called Internet of Things. To implement Internet of Things, there are many, many ways. But let's take a look at the maturity levels. Simple one to a complex one. If you want to build IoT, you can start with the very simple sensors that you include, embed in your, your assets. That's, you talk about monitoring. You put more sensors, you put more actuators, you can do control. Then you put more and more sensors, you can optimize it, and finally, you can have an autonomous asset. Let's take an example of one industry. Doesn't matter which industry that you are, you can choose that as your IoT uh, implementation. Let's take a look at automobile industry. I'm sure that you come here with a car, right? You drive, right? No? Okay. If you drive, where do you park your car? Out there? Are you sure it's still there? 100% sure. How do you know? Do we have an app to tell you where the car is being parked? No, you don't. If you don't have that, you don't even have one, the level one of IoT maturity. You need to have the ability to monitor your, your car. You put a GPS there. Okay, now you're listening to me. And then you saw you, and we take a look at your app, the car is moving. What are you going to do? Shout for help, cry, call police? That's where you put actuators inside the car that can control the car, immobilize the car. You put more and more sensors in the car that tells the battery level, the fuel level, the consumption of the, uh, you know, all the wear and tear of the car, that you can do optimization. And then finally, you become autonomous when you put intelligence in it, into the vehicle. That's the fourth level of IoT. But the beauty of IoT in different levels, it causes a lot of disruptions, especially to the business. Remember when Uber came in? It disrupts the whole taxi business. At one time, only a group of people become a taxi driver. Now, Uber, everyone can become a taxi driver. And what happened when autonomous taxi came in? No one can become a taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> so,
So what happened after autonomous taxi? You thought that everything is over? No, we have this, what we call a flying taxi. Now imagine when the taxi fly. There is a prototype in Dubai, they have done this. The, the taxi flies about, the, the battery lasts about 30 minutes. So make sure when your destination, make sure it's less than 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> okay, because of that, I have this particular dream. I, I, I took my degree, my master's and PhD, and I said, hey, can I build something? Something which can make an impact, can disrupt the whole uh, industry, for example? Because if you don't do, someone will hire you to build their own dreams. So to choose my IoT journey, I, I, I look at different segments. Whether I can solve the problems of money, solve the problem of time, or even solving the problem of health. Because you look at different segments of ages, age. Most of the young adults have all the time and the health, but don't have the money. The working adults have all the money, the health, but don't have the time. And the seniors, they have all the money, the time, but not the health. So when I choose the, a solution, then I look back at my, my late father passed away. He, he fell unconscious while I was watching my television, and then suddenly I, found, I thought that he's very exhausted. After a month, he passed away, and then only that the doctor mentioned to me that he got acute leukemia. So I wonder, why can't I able to monitor him and alert something about his health? So that's why we built these solutions we call Rakib. Rakib is a solution whereby to look at you know, the health, the condition of the aging population. We know that people are now living longer because of the health information, that we, healthcare, but not necessarily healthier. You might even get one chronic disease as you age, or two, or even three chronic diseases, hypertension, you know, diabetes, and so on and so forth. Our children are so busy with their family and no one is taking care of them. And what happens is that this kind of loneliness can even kill, have a shortened lifespan because no one is taking care of them. And even when they fall down, you are unable to get an alert. So the trend nowadays in other countries, 20%, even Malaysia, in certain states, they already reached 10% of elderly people in Malaysia. Now it's still 6%. But people nowadays tend to age at home. This is what we call the, tragic, uh, the, the aging in place. So the question is, what if? What if we have a service that able to monitor the most important assets of the individual? It's about the health, the safety, and having a peace of mind. So when we have this, what we're seeing is that, can Rakib do this? So we have a solution with a wearable device like this can, that can monitor their whereabouts. Patients who have dementia, dementia issues, Alzheimer, they tend to walk out from the house and then they tend to forget to come back. Can, can they send SOS when they fall down? Can we monitor their vital signs, their heart, their blood pressure, and so on and so forth? But if they miss you, we, you can still call them up then your mother can answer like Dick Tracy, you know, hello. Or if she misses you, she can still dial you up. So we have a solution that can, you having an app, the children can actually monitor from remote. Not to say that you don't have to go and meet, visit your parents, but you are able to re monitor, you know, re remotely monitor them, wherever they are. The health pattern, the location, so you, you're not getting worried about that. So what if we can also monitor other segments of the market having a similar solution? We are thinking of providing the solutions for the Hajj, for the pilgrimage. Every year, we we'll see that 2.3 million people going for Hajj. And in a very short time span, you can see that the conditions are you know, very hectic. The tents are quite similar, all white. You don't know where you are. People wearing the same robes, white. And uh, currently, there's no system or tools that can able to monitor them wherever they are. If there is any emergency happen, stampede or whatever, there's no way for you to locate them. 
and we, when you fall down, you get em the emergency ambulance will take you to the hospital, and you get unnoticed. So this is how we want to solve the problem by having that kind of solutions. So looking back at the the history that I mean the the. the the, my father, late father just passed away because of the health condition. I was thinking, is there any better way to monitor them? So I had this particular dream. A dream whereby we have been talking about Iron Man just now. <laughs> Remember when Iron Man wear that arc reactor? Yes. Remember Ultraman? Yes. Uh, well, everyone has been watching these old movies. <laughs> Ultraman having that color timer when the energy level just drops down and it gives an alert saying that you need to recharge. So when we have enough data that we have collected from all the sensors, from various sensors about the assets, the, the health, health of the particular person, then we are able to understand you know, their condition. So with that, when we have this, we actually live in the era of 4.0. Thank you very much. <laughs>